everyone, I'm Neza Alawi, CEO of Meshad, an international organization that empowers women on a daily basis through capacity building, networking, and leadership initiatives. Today, you are watching The Women's Advocate, our weekly show that hosts women who advance society and champion diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our guest today is Carmen Quinones, community leader, community advocate, president of the Tenants Association at Douglas Home, and Carmen is running for city council in District 7 in Upper West Side, Manhattan. Hello, Ka Carmen. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Thanks Great. for having me. What an honor to have you today. So could you tell us what made you run for city council? Well, there are a host of things that have me running for city council, and it's the, um, it's the lack of leadership. Uh, within this country, if you really want to look at it, it's, it's really within this country. But locally, it's very important that we start changing the dynamics. You know, we're, we're all concentrating on the presidential election, but we need to really look at the local elections because locally is where they make all the decisions. City Council makes decisions. Uh, I've been a public housing advocate for far too long. Mm -hmm. um, and as you see, the things that are happening in public housing uh, are too much, right? And so um, I've done all I can in my capacity uh, now. I think it's time for me to move on and make some legislation and do better for the residents uh, uh, of my um, district. So we have a lot of things going on. <laughs> Great, and it is, it is a great time for change. And uh, the world needs more leadership and, and the city needs more leadership. I think uh, New York has been going through a very difficult time and uh, we definitely need more leaders like you. Well, I appreciate that. But as you know, we have uh, a lot of uh, things that we really have to uh, look forward to doing. And I believe that the, uh, a woman's movement to clean up the mess that, that they have left is imperative right now. And so we really need to get out here, defend not only um, our children, but our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. And the only way we're gonna do that is by getting out here and fight. Great. So, Carmen, COVID has brought to light a lot of um, problems when it comes to, to food security, especially at the senior level. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and um, what, what you could do to, to help in that level? Well, actually, since the beginning of the pandemic, which was in March, March 10th, I decided that uh, uh, I had to get food for my residents. I reached out to a lot of the local elected officials um, and to no avail. Um, and I really was not uh, prepared for really what, what came, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a hold of La Fonda Restaurant, which is uh, James Gonzalez on 4th Street, between Lennox and, uh, 6th Street, I'm sorry, between Lennox and uh, 3rd Ave. And um, he was very gracious to give us food. Um, and so that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And we started getting food for our residents. Um, we were literally feeding uh, a 1,000 people. Uh, just in Douglas houses um, and so the uh, I got a call with some of the other developments that were in need of food and so I talked to James and next thing you know I was doing like 18 uh, different housing developments we actually till now we have literally literally have given out maybe 700,000 meals Amazing. Um, and counting right um, but the uh, gravity of it was enormous. And I'm gonna tell you something, New York City public housing did nothing to do, the, do for the residents of mm -hmm. um, uh, public housing. Um, actually, I had um, public, ho uh, the officers of public housing calling me, how can I help? Um, mm -hmm. How can you help this development? How can you help this development? Now, I'm not getting paid for this bad boy. <laughs> Y'all getting paid. Yeah. Um, and the mayor stated, that they were going to make sure that our ch children got, that our people got fed. Till today, mm -hmm. 
nothing. Nothing happened. You know, and only God knows where my seniors would be if it wasn't for um, La Fonda Restaurant and the connections I have. Um, and God is good. God is a yeah. powerful God, and that's how we were able to really get through. We're still giving out food. I just put out a community, uh, a community um, brief fridge. Mm -hmm. So the refrigerator is open 24 hours, uh, so people can come get food, and we're doing it. It's, um, it's sad, sad, sad to hear that um, there are some deficiencies like this happening, but it's such an amazing story to see the impact that you could create on your own with people around you that, that you have engaged into this uh, journey. Um, Carmen, could you tell us some of your proudest moments serving as a president of the Tenants Association? Wow. <laughs> I think one of the proudest moments for me was when I saw seniors coming in canes and um, wheelchairs so that I can become their president. Um, and I get teary eyes. I get really emotional sometimes. But um, I think it's the greatest thing when you know that you've really um, appreciated. Um, and for seniors to come out in wheelchairs and, and their walkers just to, to support you. That's a lot of love, and, and I think that was one of my greatest moments. Um, I think my second greatest moments, my second greatest moment was when I became a grandmother on Three Kings Day. Beautiful. Carmen, we want society to create more Carmen Quinones out there. Mm -hmm. So we need, we want to hear how, how did you become an, a, a community advocate? Tell us about your life. Tell us about what, what triggered um, you becoming who you are today. I think this, is, this will speak more to as how I know Clark Benya. Mm -hmm. Clark and me have been friends over 30 years. We started together with real people that knew what the struggle was really about. Mm -hmm. uh, elected officials that actually really cared. Um, what you were going through and making sure that you were okay. And I'm talking about the era of uh, Olga Mendez and Angelo Del Toro. Um, I remember one day I was uh, doing tenant patrol. I was the only young person on tenant patrol with a whole bunch of seniors. And they begged me to help with what was going on in the buildings. And we had this, this uh, stack of papers which were all complaints. Um, to take to elected officials about the conditions that people were living in. And I'm talking about 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and we're looking at this mm -hmm. now, right? Um, and so what I did was I took those, th those complaints over to Angelo Del Toro. I took them to Adam Clayton Powell Jr., the fourth, which I'm still waiting for the answer uh, to those complaints. But Angelo Del Toro, i never forget, he called me and he said, uh, about three weeks later, he, he called me in his office and he said, uh, uh, I'm calling you because I know that you gave me these complaints and I, and I, wh what, what do you want to do about it? And I looked at him. I was green. I didn't know no better. You know, I had so much ghetto in me. And I was like, what do you mean? You know, what's up? What you going to do? And um, this man literally looked at me and he went like this. He said, here. And he gave me the keys to his fresh West Side office and told me, here, fix the problems. Yeah. I've been running ever since. Yeah. Um, I've been running ever since that man gave me the world. Because if it wasn't for him, I would not be here um, advocating the way I advocate. And um, we need leaders like that. We don't have that anymore. I don't know what's going on with this leadership, mm -hmm. but this is not where we come from. Me and Clark come from the real deal, man. You know, where you can literally touch your elected official and knew that that elected official was going to do something. I remember I was so poor that Olga Mendes paid my rent three times. A senator Amazing. paid my rent three times. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of leadership really that we have. The leadership now is so self-serving mm. that it's just disgusting. And, and, and that's why I'm running, because somebody's got to do something. I don't know what I can do. I know, that, I know that my God is a powerful God, 
And I know that for my grandkids, my great grandkids, I got to do something. And whatever I can do, I'm going to do. Changing the dynamics of how selfish this leadership okay. is, we're going to have to do something. And so, I'm sorry, I get really passionate because I, this is, this, it bothers me I, so much. I love it. You're in the right place. <laughs> this is all about advocacy. So, so uh, we love your passion. It transpires. So, you said something. You had someone believe in you one day and yes. give you that sense of responsibility that you still have up to today. That's right. You're seeing that there is a lack of leadership in, in the politicians that are out there today. Mm -hmm. What is it that you wish for the next generation? I wish for the next generation to, um, to take care of their grandparents, to take care of their sisters, to take care of their brothers. That's what this is really about. It's not about filling your pockets up and going to a nice house and your neighbor and your neighbor is living in swallow. That's mm -hmm. not what it's about. This new, new generation can do a lot. I would hope that they get educated, be um, compassion is really the key and have God in their life. Because without God, nothing is possible. We talk a lot about human rights during these times. Can you talk to us about the importance to use our voice and our wallet to be part of the solution? Being part of the solution is being active. And I'm not talking about just raising your voice, I'm talking about action. Um, and action means to uh, follow your heart, right? We, uh, I live in public housing, proud of it. Um, I serve 3,500 residents, mm -hmm. most of them seniors um, and children. And my greatest fear now is that they will be displaced. Mm -hmm. Because the New York City Housing Authority has made it its business to really uh, demolish public housing. We have a mayor that's no good, and he needs to go. Uh, actually, the mayor and New York City Housing Authority, they all should be um, taken out of their positions. Some need to go to jail. And some of these elected officials really need to get on their jobs. What bothers me so, and I think it's one of my biggest reasons for running, um, is that you cannot tell me that a city council person or an assembly person is in office four years, four years, and you're gonna tell me that you didn't know that these people were living like that? And you have constituent services? You didn't know, but yet you wanna come out here and get photo ops, right? Because now you see the buildings falling down and everybody wants a photo op. You have a constituency, services, when people go into your office, don't tell me you didn't know that this was happening. That's my anger. Mm -hmm. That's my anger. You didn't know? You're lying. You're so full of it. And until we get rid of this, this local leadership that are gun ho in uh, real estate, and all this other stuff and lining up their pockets until we stop that, that's nothing's gonna change. And that's what I'm advocating for. The residents, the real residents, the people that live on social security that ain't got nowhere to go. That if you get rid of public housing, we'll have more homelessness than anything else in the world. Okay? Girl, pe uh, kids having kids. So there's a lot that we need to do. And the first thing we need to do is clean up government, locally and nationally. Totally, and, and you feel that those layers that are happening between leaders and people at high positions and society is due to what in your sense? Like it's due to abuse. Mm -hmm. um, they're so used to abusing us. We're so used to 
right now, let me tell you something. I think the most beautiful thing is that when I get out of here, I'm going to go home and I'm going to see lines of people ready to vote. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. Mm -hmm. But what are you really voting for? You're going to get out of the fire into the frying pan. What does, yeah. what, what does that do? Yeah. Right? But we have no choice. If we don't get Trump out and we don't get Biden in, then what do we have? We have no choice. We have to start making choices. Either make another new party and people need to stop voting Democrat all the way down. Learn how to vote. We need to educate our people that that is not the only way. And so there's just an, a lot of teaching and a lot of advocating we have to do. I mean, if I was in office, I take you and I show you what I'm doing so that you can see and you can learn. These people don't do that. Angelo taught me everything I know. Mm -hmm. So education, which is a very important topic to us, um, educating the next generation to yes. know how to vote, to know how to um, put the system on their side. These people are working for them. Exactly. And not the reverse. Exactly. So, yes, Carmen, I, I want to touch a point on women, as this is the oh, women's yes, advocate. This is our movement. Exactly. <laughs> and so, how can we have women go out there? And I, I always like to refer as women as the mothers of next generation. That's right. Because mm -hmm. whether they have children at home or not, they They're are. They still are mothers. Exactly. They are the communicators, they are the ones responsible for the next generation. So, how can women use also their voice and, and get more involved, stand up by you and by leaders like you. Um, what, what is your words to, to, to women out there? We need to take our rightful place. We really need to take our rightful place. We are not only mothers, we are grandmothers, we are great grandmothers, we are fathers. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to teach our children that they are valuable and they have what it takes and we just need to keep educating them and keep nursing them in this day and age i think it's time for women to come out and and, and start taking their rightful place um not that i'm saying men ain't no good or that yeah. but you know what the yeah. society has been run by men mm -hmm. and 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 women need to start cleaning up right mm -hmm. um i i really believe that this generation of women are powerful. I mean, I have granddaughters. Like I said, I got 11 grand, yes. grandkids, right? My granddaughters are awesome, man. I got mm -hmm. police officers. I got everything up in my family. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing what you can do with your children. And so I think that just um, each one teach one. Um, don't be afraid to ask a question. And you know what? If you don't like something, say you don't like mm -hmm. it. Don't eat what you can't. Don't eat what you can't. You know, one thing my grandmother told me, if you don't like it, don't eat it. And, and that's my biggest problem, my mouth. You know, I mean, I got a lot of backlash because I went, to, um, I went to the White House. I went to the White House because he's the president. Not that I liked him. Um, it was not that I liked him at all. Um, I was caught in Hurricane Maria, almost died in Hurricane Maria. So when I came back and, 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 and uh, I had to advocate for my people in, in, in housing, mm -hmm. I had to go to that president, and let me tell you something, I prayed on it. I talked to my pastor about it, because I really wanted to just, when I got there, just punch Trump out. But see, what we have to learn is not only about us, it's about everybody else. I couldn't think about what Carmen's feelings were. Yes. I had to think about 3,500 people. And so I went and I advocated for New York City Housing mm -hmm. Authority. The same what I did for the RNC. The Democrats didn't offer me a line to go to the DNC and talk about public housing, but the RNC did. And you know what? I took that. Yes, I did. Because New York City Housing Authority needed to be on a national stage because our people are dying and no one is doing anything about it and people are not going to jail. And why? Um. What you're describing here is a total great, great sense of leadership. I mean, you went against your personal conviction to still advocate for your cause, 
And uh, this is a great inspiration to our audience. And, and I think that, as you said earlier, it's not just about using your voice to talk, but also your voice to express your actions. Exactly. And, and, and to go out there and to push. And we do have, and you're, you're the living proof mm -hmm. that we do have the power each at, at an individual level to create change. Yes, we do. Um, a last question um, that is also very important to us. Black Lives Matter, the, the, this movement that we're seeing, how can people out there support the change in society? I think the first thing we need to do is support our own movement. Um, I'm not against Black Lives Matter. I, hey, I'm with you. I'm watched with you. I'm good. But you know what? We have to be true to ourselves first. Right. And until we choose to ourselves, we can't be true to anything else. To anything. OK, I don't care what kind of uh, movement you got. Your movement has to be about you and what you believe in. Mm -hmm. See, I don't move without getting up at six o'clock in the morning and praying. I know that my God moves me. That's that's my movement. That's my only movement. Everyone has their own movement. I believe that Black Lives Matter, Matter to um, a, a whole lot of people, but I think that sometimes we take things and we take them out of context and we need not do that. We need to put things in perspective. We need to uh, enforce uh, a, a better re reform in our police department. We don't, I don't believe we need to defund them. I think they do too much and they, the credit is not due. I remember when this first happened with the Black Lives Movement, my granddaughter, my daughter called me from Atlanta, Atlanta. Uh, she's in Atlanta, Georgia, and she hadn't heard from her daughter. So I was up two days wondering if my granddaughter was going to make it home. She didn't kill, the, she didn't kill um, Floyd. She, she wasn't the, the police officer that killed him. So why does my granddaughter or my, my son have to suffer for some, some other cop? It's not fair to put them all in one line. It is not fair. It is not. And so we need to start taking things and putting them into perspective. And until we do that, we're not going to be any good for anyone. And that's all I got to say because I can keep going. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Carmen. It was such an honor to host you today. Um, your words are enlightening. And uh, as you said, you're keeping the spirituality at your heart. You're keeping the spirituality guiding you every day. That's right. And uh, this should be an inspiration for, for everyone listening to us today. I want to thank and you for your luck. time. Thank you so good much. Good luck for what you're doing. <laughs> thank you. It was good to thank, thank you so much. <laughs>